Earning an instrument rating is rewarding, and it opens up an entirely new world of flying experiences. However, we need to continuously hone our instrument flying skills by staying current and proficient. For example, we want to stay on top of anticipating, copying, and reading back air traffic controls, sometimes rapid fire IFR approach clearances. If we get rusty, it can give us trouble at precisely a time when our workload may already be saturated. This is Dan from Flight Insight, helping out the AOPA Air Safety Institute with more videos in their Beyond Proficient series with an emphasis on how to operate more safely in the IFR environment. This one is all about elements and variations of approach clearances. There's one particular element of IFR flying that can cause us trouble. We've briefed and loaded or activated an approach and set the radios, and as we're just about to turn onto the final course, ATC gives us this approach clearance. Says the 518 Foxtrot Tango, five miles from Pristy, turn left heading 340, maintain 2000 until established on the localizer. Cleared ILS runway 31 approach. Not only are there several pieces of instruction here that we have to follow, but we have to read the instruction back correctly. It's here that we may stumble if we're not proficient. So let's step through this clearance. Like most things with radio communications, because they take a standard format, if we understand that format and why it's structured a certain way, we can anticipate what the controller will say and our readback will be smooth and ready to go as soon as they're done talking. Let's listen to that clearance again, this time with subtitles. Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, five miles from Pristy. Turn left heading 340, maintain 2000 until established on the localizer, cleared ILS runway 31 approach. There are at least two instructions in there, as well as our clearance for the approach, and then something about how far we are from a fix. Let's get some background on what the controller is saying. The Air Traffic Controller's Bible is a publication inconspicuously called JO7110.65. It mandates all kinds of procedures for controllers, including phraseology. It's in section 5-9-4 of this document that the elements and structure of an approach clearance are spelled out. First, it's the aircraft position relative to a fix on the course. This comes from the age before GPS, when aircraft on vectors might not know where they are. The controller sees your radar target and tells you where you are in relation to a fix for situational awareness. Next is a vector, or a turn if needed, which will let you intercept the final approach course. This can be an instruction to turn left and right to a specific heading, or to maintain a current heading, or to navigate direct to a fix or navigate. Last is the clearance for the approach itself, but let's read the subheadings. A clearance can't be issued unless the aircraft is established on the approach course, and if not, then it must be assigned an altitude to maintain until it is established. So for aircraft being vectored onto an approach, the altitude instruction has to come before the approach clearance. So let's rearrange these in the order we should expect to hear them. It's position, turn, altitude, and clearance. Controllers call this PTAC, and every clearance will follow this general structure. Let's apply this to the clearance we received earlier. The P is position. We're five miles from Pristy. Again, this is for situational awareness, and it's not really an instruction. T is for turn. Here we're getting a specific heading in our turn instruction. Turn left heading 340. Again, the T here could come in the form of a heading, or as an instruction to proceed direct to a fix, as we'll see later on. We're not established on the approach yet, so we'll need an altitude to maintain. Maintain 2000 until established on the localizer. Finally, our clearance. Cleared ILS runway 31 approach. Our readback only needs to include the turn, altitude, and clearance. So it'll be turn left heading 340, maintain 2000 until established, cleared ILS 31 approach, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango. There's no need to read our position back since it's just for situational awareness. Let's dive in on each element of the clearance. The P for position is straightforward. The controller is gauging your distance from a fix on their radar screen using mileage marks. It's often eyeballed, so it's a close approximation of your actual distance. The T for turn is how we're gonna get from that position to the approach. In this example, we're getting a vector to final, but we can also be cleared direct to an initial approach fix. A vector to final should put us on a course to smoothly intercept the approach course whether the guidance is from a localizer or from the GPS. The idea is to set us up so that we don't fly through the approach course. 
This means we'll typically be given a heading that's no more than 30 degrees offset from the approach course. On our ILS approach to runway 31, the approach course is 308 degrees, so we get a turn to 340. Let's take a step back though and look at where we came from before getting this vector to intercept. Controllers have different procedures at different airports for how and where to vector aircraft onto an approach, but a typical configuration mirrors the VFR traffic pattern we're familiar with from private pilot training, with a downwind, base, and final. Let's say we're arriving from the west. We'll initially be given a heading of 130, downwind for runway 31. Next, we'll get a base turn to 040. Where might we expect to get that turn instruction? It has to do with where the controller needs us to intercept the approach. There's something called the approach gate, defined in the pilot controller glossary as being one mile from the final approach fix on the side away from the airport, or five miles out from the landing threshold, whichever is farther out. Most gates will just be one mile from the FAF. Let's look at our FAF at Pristy. One mile out from there is our gate. Generally speaking, controllers have to give us a vector that allows us to intercept at least two miles from the gate. In other words, we'll intercept the approach course no closer than three miles from the FAF. There are situations where we can get a closer intercept, but when the airport is IFR, there's a likelihood that the controller will be required to give us that intercept farther out. Tracking back from that point three miles from the FAF, we have a point where we can expect to get our turn from downwind to base. We can expect to hear a simple vector like, turn left heading 040. This puts us on a 90 degree angle with the approach course. And as we said, the controller has to give us a 30 degree or better intercept angle. When we get our next vector, which will be part of the clearance, we'll expect it to be a left turn to 340. The A for altitude is a little bit more of a black box than the turns were. There are of course procedures for the controller to follow for altitudes too. Most of these have to do with the minimum vectoring altitude for where we're flying, which is not something we're typically aware of in flight. On a published approach, there are strict altitudes to follow to keep us clear of obstacles, but before we're on one of those segments, the controller issues us an altitude to provide the same protections. Our final approach clearance will include an altitude to maintain until we're established on the approach guidance, in this case the localizer. After that, we can just follow the published altitude of the procedure. We're intercepting in between STEV, the initial approach fix with a minimum altitude of 2000, and PRISTI, the FAF with a 1700 minimum, so we know our altitude to maintain can't be below 1700 and is likely to be at least 2000. If we're flying above this altitude, we should expect a descent to be given with our clearance. Controllers are mindful of the need for stabilized approaches and won't typically keep us up high only to slam dunk us down to 2000 feet at the last minute, so we may have already been cleared down that low. The C for clearance seems straightforward, but there can be some twists. A controller can simply say cleared approach. This means we can shoot whatever approach is available at the airport, with the exception of a visual. The controller might say cleared ILS approach without indicating which runway. This would be allowed if the airport had only one ILS approach. Typically though, the clearance will include the type of approach and the runway or letter designation if it's not a straight in. This is how our vector to final approach clearance gets built. Let's look at a few other types of approach clearances. Let's say now that we're approaching from the northeast, flying along Victor 139. Most aircraft are GPS equipped and will be able to fly a route direct to the initial approach fix, STEV, which is what we might expect here. Let's build a PTAC clearance for this aircraft. The position, let's say, is 7 miles from STEV. Our turn won't be a vector to a specific heading, it will be proceed direct STEV. Our altitude will be such that it allows us to maintain minimums as we join the approach course. Since the altitude restriction is no lower than 2000, we can expect to be told to cross dev at or above 2000. Now, with the clearance, there's a small wrinkle. A hold in lieu of procedure turn is depicted at stev. If we're cleared for this approach, we should do this course reversal. The exception would be if our clearance includes the words straight in, which negates the course reversal. On our vectors example, the controller has to give us an intercept angle no greater than 30 degrees. Farther out here at the initial approach fix, the controller is able to give us a turn onto final up to 90 degrees offset. Coming along this airway, we'll have a less than 90 degree intercept. The controller could clear us straight in, saying cleared straight in ILS 31 approach. If the controller simply says cleared ILS 31 approach, we should do the course reversal. We're looking at a rather aggressive turn here, even if it is within the 90 degree tolerance. 
so we might feel better doing the course reversal, especially if we have some altitude to lose first. Requesting that, the controller may then say, cleared ILS-31 full approach. A good practice is to always clarify with the controller whether or not you're going to be doing the course reversal. Let's see if we can put everything together and use PTAC to anticipate the controller instruction. This time, we're practicing approaches at Baltimore, situated in class Bravo airspace. Even with precision GPS equipment, a decent chunk of the approaches we do will be vectored. So let's practice one. We're arriving from the southwest and have been told, expect vectors ILS-33 right approach. We're on a base leg currently flying a 060 heading. First, where should we expect our vector to point us to? Start at the FAF, it's Oriole. The gate is one mile outside of this, and we should expect our vector to hit no closer than two miles outside of that. In other words, three or more miles from Oriole. That means we'll be somewhere around here when we get our clearance. Typically just before reaching the localizer feather where the needle will come alive. The P in position then might be four miles from Oriole. The approach course is 335. We won't get a vector that's more than a 30 degree angle of that so we can expect our turn to be left to 360. Just because we're expecting this turn doesn't mean we should make it until actually given the instruction. If for whatever reason we haven't gotten the turn and it looks like we're gonna be overshooting the approach course, we should stick to our present heading and query the controller who might be busy or have something else in mind for us. Intercepting between Oriole and Duds, we'll expect to be cleared to an altitude that lets us meet the minimums without having to drive down hard in a descent so we intercept the glide slope from below. We might get either two or 3,000 feet, but I'd expect to be told to maintain 2,000 until intercepting localizer. The clearance is straightforward. Cleared ILS runway 33 right. So let's put it all together and guess the controller's instruction. Cessna 8 Foxtrot Tango, four miles from Oriole, turn left heading 360, maintain 2,000 until established on the localizer, cleared ILS runway 33 right approach. Using the PTAC technique on your approaches will not only vastly improve your situational awareness, but will help you cut down on the surprise factor at a critical moment when things are about to get much busier in the cockpit.